know what you need to do, but you don't belong. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Fallon. Welcome to Fal B TV. Thank you for um, about to spend the next couple of minutes with me. As in the title, um, I am talking about a touchy subject, um, especially in the Christian community, but it also is my reality. So I just want to put a disclaimer out. I'm not glorifying anything. I'm not saying um, you know, it's a good thing to do and I'm not knocking anybody that's doing it. I'm just telling you my story, my background, what I've been through. And I will say that, um, in it all that I have learned to rely on God and I don't have to do things that, um, that's not tasteful to the kingdom. Amen. So, um, as I, as I give you a little background of my story of what I went through, I also pray that it encourages you, um, to just trust on God a little bit more and, um, to base your decisions based on you resting in him in faith that he will provide for you. Um, so as in the title from stripper to preacher to pastor, um, yes, um, I found myself stripping before. Um, it's not something that I'm proud of. Um, it actually was something that I kind of did out of the basics of a need. Um, I was young. Um, I just had had my baby. Um, this is when I was living in um, the streets of New York in Brooklyn to be exact. And, um, you know, some of you know, and for those that don't know, I do have a book called The Let Go. I will put it in the description. It has a lot of what I've been through. So I'm not going to run through everything, but just a little brief synopsis. Um, I, my parents were um, addicted to drugs. I was in and out of foster care and, you know, a lot of trials and tribulations coming up. And after I had my daughter, um, you know, my, my mom was still abusing um, alcohol and drugs. And with that, with that being said, um, it would have her doing things that she shouldn't have been doing. Um, and sometimes um, my wick checks, my daughter wick checks. Um, will be stolen from me and Wick is in the city. I don't know if they have it in other places, but it's like government assistant where they give you little checks for milk. And um, even though I was young, I have I was pregnant at 16, but by the time I was 17, I had my baby and everything. And even though I was young, I was still wise enough to try to get a little assistance and things that I need because, you know, I knew I didn't have anything. You know, my daughter's um, father had just got locked up and they had sentenced him to 25 years to life. And this was before I met my husband. So it was just me and my daughter. I'm young. You know, I'm a teenager and I didn't really have anything. You know, um, I didn't even have my GED yet, you know, which I went back and got. But, you know, I was just trying to keep my head over waters, um, you know, trying to survive. And I just knew that I wanted to provide for her. I knew that I didn't want, that enough I was a statistic, but I didn't want my daughter to kind of go through the things that I went through. Um, by the time my daughter came, I just knew that this was like the love of my life. This was somebody that was going to change my life. This was someone also who wasn't just needing me to step my game up, but wanted me to step my game up. You know, I wanted to step my game up. There was a need to become a better me when um, she entered my life. And I was just trying and trying. And, you know, I remember my wig checks would be stolen. And um, I didn't have, with the wig, it's, it's milk. So I didn't have money. And then sometimes, you know, I had little boyfriends, little friends here and there. And I would ask them for money and stuff like that to get milk. And they would go and get her cans and cans of milk. But, you know, that to be a little embarrassing too. Because I'm like, you know, um, this person stole, you know, my mom stole my milk or my wig checks. And, you know, I don't have um, milk for the baby, you know. And um, I just got to the point where I'm like, you know, I just need money, you know. Um... A job didn't really come to my head first because the truth be told, sometimes you become a product of your environment. And um, this is why I'm a big advocate of saying, you know, it's okay to get out of your environment sometimes to see the rainbow, to see the sunny days. And everyone around me was hustlers. You know, there were fe very few who went to work and the ones that went to work, they didn't really interact with us because they were coming and going. So those that were around me were hustling, drugs, um, boosting clothes. That means like going to the stores and stealing, um, you know, stripping or whatever. And at this time, a, a friend of mine 
had another friend who was stripped. And it's so funny because never say what you wouldn't do. I was always a woman, you know, coming up with say I wouldn't go boosting, I wouldn't sell drugs, I wouldn't strip, and I found myself doing all the above to survive. And I knew that I wasn't <clears throat> the type of woman that, first of all, I can't dance, don't got no soul, right? Not trying to be, funny. well, not trying to lighten up the situation, but it's true. So I knew I didn't really know how to dance. I know I know how to whine. You know, in Brooklyn coming up, they play a lot of Jamaican music. So I knew I know how to whine. And I know I know how to be seductive and, you know, a pretty woman when need to be. But I really didn't know anything about stripping. Um, I was never really the type um, to use lust and seduction to kind of get my way you know i was always kind of like a tomboy but i knew that they were generating money um you know and they just made it seem like it was easy you know um and it was things that i could do like i know that you know i'm a woman so i know i can do these things and you know at the time i knew that sex sells you know what i'm saying so when the when the opportunity came and presented itself in the back of my head i'm like you know foul you know you don't do this you know but Another sense was like, this baby needs milk, this baby needs pampers, and things of that nature. Even though I was like, um, at 13 I got saved, sometimes even when you get saved young, you find yourself out of the elements of the kingdom of God. So around this time, you know, I'm smoking weed, I'm stressed out, I'm not in the church like I used to. I wasn't going with my godmother to church every Sunday, because if I was, I would have known to trust God and just... You know, or, have, or tell the church family what I was going through, but I, I didn't have that around me. So, you know, um, I kind of let them gas me up and I said, okay, you know, let's go. And we would go to these little rinky dinky clubs in um, New Jersey. And it was just a whole new world. I would walk in there and I would just see, it was almost like hell. Like I can, you can just see the lust in the air. You can smell the lust. Um, you got women looking at you like they, they want to entice you. You got men looking at you. It's like you're a piece of meat just walking to, you know, a place to get slaughtered. And it was just a different world for me. But again, in my head, I'm like, I'm just going to come here. I'm just going to, you know, get a couple of dollars and, um, you know, for, for me and my daughter. And I have to be honest, it was very dangerous. You know, I'm around a bunch of men I don't know. Um, you, you don't know what type of mentalities they had. And... It was almost like people can smell the newness. Like they knew I wasn't that that wasn't my my thing. Like they knew I was the newbie. You know what I mean? Um, certain girls, you know, would act stink and you know, and you can't sit here and you can't do that. And this was not a place that you wanted to clap back and fight. You know, even though I was a fighter, it's not a place that you want to fight. You know, you knew that they was being catty, but you knew that if you was to fight or do something, you know, that you can get kicked out and 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 lose the opportunity of making money. I was always wise, so I wasn't stupid enough to fall into they. Snaps, but I knew that it was jealousy because here comes a newbie, you know, um, thick in all the areas because I just had my daughter, you know, still looking young and fresh meat, fresh meat, you know. And I remember walking into the club and I was just so nervous, y'all, and just so out of my, my element. And um, I would just, at first, I would just walk through the clubs and I would just like do lap dances because I knew that it didn't take much to do lap dances and, you know, get a couple of dollars. I wasn't really there yet where I can get on a stage and like present myself for everybody to see. So I would just maneuver my way through the club doing lap dances and things of that nature. And um, then the next time we would come and, you know, keep doing that. Then the next time, you know, my friends would be like, you know, it's more money. But um, the rules are you have to hit the stage. You have to hit the stage. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is not my thing. This and that and the third. And um, one of the clubs, I, I had to work the stage. We went to a different club. It was a little nicer. And it was mandatory. So I remember um, back in the day, it was a movie called The Players Club. And it was a young pretty lady, um, her name was Diamond. And um, I remember her playing R. Kelly and, you know, just hitting the stage. So in my head, I'm like, I'm just going to do what Diamond did. Because, again, it, it wasn't my element. You know, I remember this, the, it was the club about strippers. I remember that scene. So I'm like, put them some R. Kelly and I get on there. And you can tell I'm nervous. So the first time one girl, you know, because they were haters, a lot of jealousy. So one time the girl was yelling out, she needs to tighten up her G-string. So they're like ridiculing me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? What am I? I get myself into and now tighten my little g-string and in my head I was like just do what you do when you're being intimate with someone just do what you would do in there so I just closed my eyes and let it go and just freely you know did whatever I would do 
you know, having intercourse. And um, everybody just started throwing money. You know, they just started throwing money at me. I, I made a lot of money that night. Um, when I went home, I cried. Um, I felt so low. I just didn't understand. Like, I know for other people, this is something that they do. And, um, you know, I, I would never try to talk down on someone. But for me, it just wasn't me. And I just felt dirty. And I remember just taking a shower. And I remember just scrubbing my skin so hard. And um, as I was scrubbing my skin, it was almost to the point like it was starting to hurt because I just felt so dirty. I remember I, I, will, um, I had my little cousins and stuff, you know, my little friends watch my daughter. And I remember, um, you know, grabbing her to lay her by me. And I remember not even wanting to lay by my daughter because I just felt so dirty. I just felt, I, I, it just wasn't me, you know, it just wasn't me. And I do remember, like, just saying to myself, like, you know, things just got to get better. Like, I just can't live like this. Like, this is not what I imagined um, for me and my daughter. And because I made a lot of money and I was like a new face, um, you know, my friends would come again the weekend hit again. You know, sometime we were there on a weekday and um, they would say to me, you know, like, come on, let's go back out. Let's go back out. And even in my heart. I didn't want to go, you know, I, I just, it wasn't me. I didn't want to go, but at the same time, the money, it was just fast money. I would come home with all this money and I felt good. I would go downtown Brooklyn and I would buy her her pampers. I would buy her, her milk. I would buy her her outfits, like whatever she needed, whatever I needed. But I knew it was just something I didn't want to do. But at the time I just felt like it was something I had to do. And, um, God, you know, what I love about God is he will meet you right where you're at because I believe in my heart he felt that. And um, we went to another club um, again afterwards and, you know, we danced and everything. And then I've made what I felt like was a comfortable amount for me because, like I said, at this point, I just didn't want to be there. And um, it was a gentleman there and um, he's like, he comes and he sits by me. He had like a little accent. It's like a West Indian guy. And he's like... I've been doing this for a long time and um, he's like, uh, let me just turn this on. He's like, you know, you don't belong there. He's like, you don't belong here. He's like, I've been doing this for a long time. And he didn't try to, you know, pimp me out. He wasn't trying to make me like one of his girls. It was almost like, it was almost like God came in and met me right in the strip club. And I remember him saying, you know, look around. He was telling me, he said, look around, look at all of these girls. He said, they not sitting down. They don't sit down. He said, they work their bodies to, to his time to close. And he's like, look at you. You're sitting down. You don't belong here. He was like, I don't know if you need to go back to school. I don't know what you need to do here. You don't belong here. And I just felt like, like. At that moment right there, God met me right in the strip club. God just came and he just held me and he just held his arms around me. He just met me right there in the strip club. And I looked at that man and I'm like saying to myself, like, you're right. I don't want to be here. I just don't want to be here. And I told myself that night that I just wouldn't do it again. And um, I remember... My friends would come and try to get me to come to the club. And, and I just was like, no, I, I just, you know, I'm just not going back. Because there was just so many things that I felt myself doing in that little short period of time that I was there. I had sex for money. Like, it was just things that I was doing. I just thank God that, um you know, I don't have, like, HIV or, you know, no, no, I don't have no sexual diseases. You know, God really covered me. And, um... I believe it's also because he knew he was calling me to be a pastor and I pastor people from all walks of life. Like I'm just so real with my pastoring and, um, you know, so raw and so authentic and just been through, you know, so many things, you know, so many people think like my life started when my husband died and that was, you know, sad and traumatic, but things have been sad and traumatic even before I met my husband. Like my story is just sad. And, um, I told myself I wasn't going back. 
And um, I ended up making a call to my grandma, and I just knew I had to just get out. And you know, I called my grandparents. They had a house in um, Long Island, New York, and I came out. And you know, I went and got my GED and I started college. And that's how I met my husband, who ended up passing. I met him in Long Island, and I just made sure I had a better life for me and my daughter. I didn't have the two boys. It was just me, you know, at the time it was just me and my daughter. And I just knew that I wanted more for her. And I, I don't know, I don't know why I'm crying telling this story because I I usually tell it and I don't cry, but I think I'm just thinking about where God has brought me from and you know, the things that you find yourself doing when you feel alone and you feel lost. And, you know, I just felt like I didn't feel love. I just felt abandoned. I felt like I was just by myself. And um, I'm telling you, when that guy came in the strip club and, 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 the, and the owner and he sat by me and he said that I know in my heart that that was God. That was God talking through that man because most men who own strip clubs and who are about their money and I had a fresh face and you knew that I was new to it, you know, they would have tried to pimp me out. They would have tried, you know, to turn me out, but God didn't, God used him to bring me out. Amen. And, um, I'm shortening up the story a little bit because I don't want to be sitting here crying through the whole story and, you know, and, uh, it's just bringing back some things up, but I knew in my heart that I have to be real on this channel. Yeah, I do beauty stuff. Yeah, I do vlogs. But my story times, like I told you in the beginning when I had the story time about how I had a baby um, with my best friend's man. Like, it's not to glorify anything, but it's just to show you what God can do through you, you know, and to you. I'm a woman that just had all types of walks through life, been through all types of things, but... I also have one of the most effective ministries to date, and it's an internet church. Like, people who used to be witches, people who used to sell drugs, do drugs, prostitute, commit suicide, like so many things that walks of life, and people are really changing from Pray to Slay Ministries. And I will leave the description um, in the link um, for Fallon Brown, that's our channel, where we um, have our teachings, but... I have an effective ministry that God has given me through the Holy Ghost. And I know it's really because of the things that he brought me from. And if I come on this channel just to try to make money, just to try to get subscribers and not be authentic and not be honest, I'm not doing service to the kingdom. I know he's going to grow, grow this channel. I know he, you know, going to make me a household name and, you know, and, 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 and bless people. Uh, and, I mean, and bless me, but I also know that I need to bless people. And I know that trying to act holier than thou and acting like I come from this beautiful background is not going to bless you. There's someone that is watching this right now that God has placed to watch this. And you might be in the strip club. You might be going back and forth to the strip club. You might come home and, and wash your skin like I did and crying in the shower and feeling so dirty. And this is your confirmation that you don't have to live like that. Or you might be someone selling drugs or manipulating, doing whatever you're doing, but not resting on God. And God has used me through this story time to deliver you to tell you that he is your light he is your way and all you got to do is pray and just rest in him and at the time I didn't even have sense enough to just really pray but I had sense enough just to cry out and sometimes just crying out is your way of praying for God to hear you the Bible says with the Israelites that he heard their cries their cries it didn't say he heard their prayers it said he heard their cries so sometimes just crying out to the Lord he will send you help and when he had that man meet me right at the strip club that was my help so I just pray I'm look a preacher always preaching right but I just pray to God that this story time that this is the story time that is gonna change the trajectory of your life that you're gonna say you know what I'm hanging up my heels I'm hanging up my stilettos I'm not going to the stripper club anymore let me pick up my Bible let me cry out to someone let me tell them that I need help and I'm telling you, God will just blow your mind. He will increase your mind. This life that I'm living now, I would have never thought that I would have this much peace. You know, yes, I go through things and, you know, um, on the road to becoming a millionaire and have businesses and church and this and that. But it, there's a sense of peace that I have. There's a sense of rest that I have um, that I just know that God is going to come through for me. And I don't have to manipulate anything. Like, if a bill is due, I'm going to pray about it, and I'm just going to trust you, God. 
You know, I'm going to do the work that I need to do to, to um, you know, make a living or do whatever he tells me to do. But at the end of the day, when I have done everything that I can do, and it seems like nothing else is, that I'm doing is working, then that is an indication for me to just rest. So I don't know, you know, who this is for. And I'm feeling like just to pray. I know I don't pray much on this channel because this is like a, you know, a personal channel and I do my beauty stuff and everything. But I also know that I'm led by God. And if he's telling me to pray, then that means that someone who is watching is, even if it's just two people that watch this video, even if it's 200,000 or a million, I know that this will bless you. So Father God, I come to you right now, Lord, and I thank you for this time of revelation, this, this truth, this transparency moment, God. And I pray pray that whoever is watching this, Father God, that you would change the trajectory of their life. I pray that they don't feel like they need um, to do anything that is not of you or anything that goes against um, their morals, Father God, to make a living. Father God, that whatever need that they need, that you will place it in their bosom right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I pray that you will put their name and, and put them on somebody's mind that's in a position to bless them tangibly. Father God, we know that there's a blessing in miracles and spiritual things, but you even said in the word of God that money answers all things. We know that sometimes it takes tangible blessings to fulfill that need, that for us to have that breakthrough moment. And God, I'm praying that after this prayer or even while this prayer that they will receive a call that they will receive what they need God that it will be an indication that you are with them and that everything is going to be all right and I pray in Jesus mighty name that they will serve you they will honor you they will get a bible based church and open up their bibles and read more but I pray that you will use this story that you will use this time that they will thinking they were getting some tea you know a, a great story time on YouTube and they really realize that this was a moment for them to receive you, to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I thank you for this moment and this opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And listen, like I said before, the other channel name is Fallon Brown. F-A-L-L-O-N. Brown is the color. I will put the description and the link below so you can you know, follow us if you, you're looking for a Bible-based church. Um, it is an internet church, so you don't got to get all dressed up. Sometimes, you know, we get dressed up. You know, I get dressed up and cute, but at least use the noise because my son is upstairs gaming. He's a gamer, if you do hear him. But, you know, if you're looking for a Bible-based church, I would love for you, um, you know, to take part in my church. Um, and like I said, it's a, I see a lot of growth, you know, with the testimonies that people send me. But whatever it is, just find you a church, you know. Um, my my walk is with God, with Jesus Christ. I don't know what your walk is. You might be a Muslim, you might be Buddha, whatever it is. This still is your confirmation, amen, that whatever you're doing and it's not giving you fruit, it's not giving you peace, that you don't have to do it again. So please, if this video blessed you, if you like it, um, if you're looking for makeup tutorials, if you're looking for good vlogs, just good TV, listen on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment. I would love to interact with you. Please comment and tell me how you felt about this story time. Um, let me know if you're, you know, were a stripper or, or are a stripper and, you know, um, did some of the things that I said, did it resonate with you? Or maybe you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing and this gave you confirmation that you should change. Whatever it is, you know, talk to me down at the um in the description and let's comment in the comment bar let's let's comment let's interact with one another but please if you can subscribe to this channel give me a thumbs up and thank you so much be blessed